Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free tutorial site for Photoshop, Lightroom, and Photoshop Elements. In this video, I'll be taking this 2D image of a waterway in Venice and transforming it into this 3D image that we can step into. Let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here's our opening image. I got this one from stock image site Photolia. It's by Rattle Gruber and called Beautiful Scene in Venice. The first thing I need to do is tell Photoshop where my walls or planes are in this image. And to do that, I'm going to go to Filter and Vanishing Point. Now I'm going to create some planes in here. If you're not already familiar with creating planes using Vanishing Point, I did a video tutorial about this a couple of weeks ago, and there should be a shortened link on screen about now. I would highly recommend that you go and see that one for more details on how to create planes. But for now, let's very briefly just go over it one more time. So I've got my Create Plane tool and I'm going to start actually on the floor and create my first plane by just coming around. Now you'll notice that even though this is straight, my waterway isn't and so I can't get it absolutely bang on. But I'll get it as close as I can. To create another plane, I just click on this Create Plane tool and I can drag them out. And sure enough, there goes my end. Now then, let's see if I can create a couple more very quickly. That's not quite coming out in the way I wanted it to. Nor is that one. Oh, that wasn't a new plane. Let's go and make a new plane. That's not really working out either. So I'm going to need to put in a little bit more work on my floor here before I go and create new planes. And that's where it can be very tricky indeed, is getting that first one absolutely bang on, and you know that your other planes are going to work well from it. Now I know this can be done because I've already done this previously, and in fact, rather than you stand here and watch me do this one more time, um, let's go and grab that other file and you can see how I get on. Okay, here we are again, and I've got my four planes, one, two, three, and four, and you can see that I've extended them up so they cover the whole of my image. That's quite important. Now I did take some jiggering around, so it does need a bit more time than I could have spent here in this tutorial. I don't want to bore you too much. Okay, now all I have to do is take these planes and put them into Photoshop, and it's making it very easy for us up here. There's a drop down menu. If I click on that, you can see we have Return 3D Layer to Photoshop. So let's click on that. And then when I click OK, this bar down the bottom here will start going up. Blue bar will go across here and it will build my 3D planes. Now again, that is quite time consuming, so I won't sit here and wait for this. I've actually done it already. So if I click Cancel of here, so back in Photoshop, it creates these layers here. We've got this one temp layer and then these textures, which are actually our plane. So if I click on that, you can see that it's actually put the bottom of it quite high up. We're looking at the underside of this waterway, in fact. Now I need to get this in position. So to do that, I can use my 3D tools just to pull them around a bit. Now you see I'm just pulling this around and I can then come up here and do this way. And again, this can be quite time consuming. So you may have noticed that above this, I've got one that's called position. So I'm going to go and grab that one now, turn that one on, and I've already positioned it where I want it to be. It's all about using a bit of finesse. I'm just going to get rid of this template because that's going to slow me down otherwise. And there's my position layer. And if I click on that, you can see I've got exactly the same going on. Now we need to animate this. So what I'm going to go to is Timeline down the bottom here and double click on that. And it says Create a Video Timeline. That's what I want to do. I click on that. And sure enough, we have our layer positioned right there. Our playhead is right at the beginning. So if I twirl open this layer, we get these controls here. Uh, what I'm looking for is Camera Position. 
So I'm going to click on the stopwatch and that tells Photoshop that I want to animate this particular part. So then if I go up to the end of my timeline here, you can see it takes its time a little bit and this is just one second. So there was this kind of sluggish delay, but I can take my 3D camera and now using my tools again, I can come down onto this icon here and I can, whoop, I can then go in and uh, position the camera where I want it to end. Now these can be a little bit fiddly, but needless to say, I'm going to give it my best shot. Working with 3D isn't my forte, as you're probably beginning to realize. There we go. So now we've gone from right back to into the image. I'm going to rewind to the beginning, click on this icon here. So that's going to take my playhead back to the beginning. Again, it's a little bit sluggish. Let's turn off my background layer so that doesn't complicate things and press play. And it's going to render this video. This sort of bluey greeny line will show what's rendered and it's going to step through. Now I'm not claiming my computer is super fast nor is it super slow. It's kind of an average computer and even so this is still taking quite a while. And what you can see on screen, this bar here is a representation of one second of footage. So you can see to do just one second is quite a laborious process. There is a quicker way, so bear with me. It does get quicker in just a while. There we go, we're almost at the end. That's that, so if I rewind now, back to the beginning, and then press play. Again, a little bit tricky, there we go. And so we've gone into our image. And I can go back to the beginning and play that through again, should I wish. We can loop this somewhere. Um, but there we go, so we've gone into the image. Now, it's not great, it doesn't do a great job of keeping these buildings in perspective. So we need a better way. This is certainly not the way that my opening example showed you, but this is the way to do it entirely in Photoshop. I'm going to close down the timeline here just by double clicking on it. I'm going to hide the visibility of this layer because I don't need this anymore. And then go back to my background layer and then back up to filter and vanishing point because I need these planes again. In fact, what I need is to click on this icon once more and come down and click export for After Effects. Now, if you've got a creative suite with After Effects in it, then you'll obviously be able to do this. And if you're a Creative Cloud member, then After Effects comes with Creative Cloud. If you've never used it before, this might be a good way to start. It's a nice, simple little project and the uh, outcomes are great. So you can see that we're going to export for After Effects as a VPE, which is a vanishing point exchange. So I'm going to click on that and then click where I want it to save. And I want to call this one Venice VPE. And sure enough, there's already one there. So I don't need to save it this particular time. And uh, then I just press OK. And again, the blue bar will go across, but I want to save time. So I've already gone ahead and done that. That's going to take about 45 seconds to a minute. But I've saved that now, so I'm all done with Photoshop. That's all saved and ready to go. And so here we are in After Effects, and I just need to go to File, and then Import, and VPE, a vanishing point. And sure enough, there it is. If I click on that and OK, in come my files. And you'll notice we've got these four planes again and this other one which is called a composition and that's the way After Effects works with different compositions. More of that perhaps another time. But all I have to do here is double click on this icon and it's going to populate this area here with everything that I need. And sure enough, there it all goes. And once again, I'm a little bit uh, scatty, but that's okay if I click on this top one and then shift click on the bottom. I can then grab hold and move them all together. And let's go and get the parent, which is controlling all four. And I can transform this one just by twirling these down. And let's try this positional one. Is that the one that turns it? No. Uh, orientation, of course, I can turn it around and get it all into position using these positional anchor points here. Let's go down there. Now, once again, 
I have gone ahead and created this already and got myself into the right place. Let me go and grab that one. Okay, there we go. I'm all in position. That's where I want to start. I'm happy with that. I'm going to twirl this one closed and this one closed. And you'll see that the layer on the top is the camera. And that's exactly how we're going to look at it. Previously, with the other layers, this parent layer and these four, we have been altering the position of the layers in three-dimensional space. Now, using the camera, those layers will stay still and we can move through them just with the camera. Let's twirl this one open and sure enough we'll find two different ones here, transform and camera options. Feel free to have a play around in camera options, but I'm not going to here. I'm just going to click open transform and it's very similar to what we saw just a second ago. Now what I want to do is change my position and my orientation. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch for position and click on the stopwatch for orientation. And now After Effects knows that I want to animate those and I'm going to bring up my time to here. Now you see that I'm working with 10 seconds now. This is a 10 second point, not a one second point, And it's going to work so much easier. But at this 10 second point or thereabouts, I'm going to change my position. I'm going to get click and then just drag to the right on this one. Now it goes a bit slowly. Shift key down, it moves a lot quicker. And then let's do the same with this one here. Let's just move over a bit, maybe come down a little bit on to the side. And then the orientation, I just wanted to turn a little bit while I'm going through space. There we go. Now if I click and drag on my current time indicator here, you can see that I can see this actually in real time as well. Not real time, but I can drag through each frame. Let's render that by clicking on the play button here and it will go through it one at a time, just making a RAM preview for me. And then sure enough, when it gets to the 10 second, you see we're already at six seconds. It's working much quicker than Photoshop and a lot smoother too. There we go. And it's done it now. There we are and then it runs through it uh, in real time. So a much, much smoother and more accurate job. And you'll notice that the walls look much better too. Lovely. Now all we have to do is go to File and Export, and I'm going to add to a render queue. Now your settings will be up to you. At the moment it's set on lossless for me. If I click on that, I can then change this to how I want it. I prefer mine to be in H.264 and I can resize it as well. Come down much further than that uh, to about 1000 pixels. There we go. I don't need sound so I can uncheck that and then just click OK. And I can choose where I want it to go. Good. And then it will go through it and render it all for you out into its own file. So there we are. It's a little bit convoluted. My apologies. Well done for sticking with me. Have a go. Step into your own photographs with Photoshop. And if you're really feeling daring, After Effects. Thank you very much for bearing with me. I'll see you next time.